this video we're going to go over building the V-slot belt and pinion system. Alright, so you're going to need the V-slot gantry plate and four of the V-wheel kits. We're going to be mounting this to uh, 20 by 60 V-slot. So we are going to make sure that we use the second hole in from the top as well as from the bottom we'll be using the second hole up for the eccentric spacers and one of the things you want to do on the top is to put your space quarter inch spacers on and then you're going to put your precision shims on one of the things I wanted to note with this is that you're putting the precision shims on here it gives it a little more spacing that we need All right, I just hand tighten those, but this is what it should look like. I'm going to go through and tighten these down real quick. All right, that takes care of that. Now we'll work on the bottom set of wheels here. So remembering to move one hole in, like you see here. These will also have the eccentric spacers. Make sure that the lip goes down into the hole. Don't forget to put the precision shim for the spacing and then the wheel. A lot of times these wheels, if the washer inside moves around, they're hard to get on, but if you give them a spin, they'll slide right on usually. And we'll do the other one. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to go through and adjust the eccentrics until the divot mark is facing out this way. Now remember these are very loose, just hand tight, tightened. And now I'm going to take the uh, wrench and just tighten these down just a little bit because we still have to move these to tighten them to the rail. So just give them a little bit of a turn just so they're not loose. That's good. Make sure the eccentrics didn't move. You can see the divots are out here now. Okay, now that we have the wheels on, uh, with the eccentric spacers facing up, we're going to bring in the V-slot 2060. I'm just going to put it on there, and of course it's going to be loose now. Let me spin this around. And I'm just going to press this down to the table, and put my thumb here pressing down on the V-slot. By doing that, I'm pressing against the bottom wheels. Now I can rotate the eccentrics until they lock onto the rail. And remember you just want them to touch. Now see as I turn this the rails moving that's pretty tight but I can still it can spin out a little bit so that's alright. Let me do this one. I can just hold this rail in place and kind of see how tight it is by spinning this wheel. This one's too tight. That's good. Now the final test is just wiggle this to make sure that it's not clicking or moving and it's not. So we're good here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tighten this wheel down on here. Finish it. Okay, so it's like a not even an eighth of a turn it's on. Alright, that's nice. Smooth. No play. It's perfect. Okay, let's take this off for now. Okay, so we have the gantry plate with the wheels mounted. We've already adjusted our eccentrics so that it fits onto the V-slot 20 by 60. Everything's good there. Um, you want to take this plate and make sure you have the standard spacers at the top. Let's flip it over and we are going to bring in our motor mount plate and we're basically going to mount it just like this. You're going to need uh, two 10 millimeter screws and a double T-nut. And we're just going to go through the back here on these top two holes, 20 millimeter spacings, to create a couple studs right there for this to this plate to mount to. Just like this. We'll take our double T nut, put it on the back. Just going to hold it there with my thumb while I take the screwdriver and tighten it down, alternating. 
And one thing I will mention is you're, you're going to want to pull this plate up if there's any play. Just pull it up to the top because you want to make sure you have room for your uh, and also make sure it's straight. You want to make sure you have room for the stepper to fit. But you can always loosen it if you need to. So this is what you're after. On the wheel side we have the two screws. The plate is mounted to the back with the Tina on the back as well. Okay at this point we will introduce the stepper motor and I'm going to mount the stepper motor directly to the back here. Just like you see I got the wires facing down. And let me flip it over real quick. And we'll just use our M3 six millimeters to mount the stepper. Let's do that now. It's these little guys. Okay, so at this point we have the stepper motor mounted. Uh, I can give you a little bit of advice with these little screws. You're going to want to push them into the holes with your finger first because otherwise it's a pain. Okay, at this time we're ready to install our 20 tooth GT2 pulley. And you're going to want to take your stepper motor, rotate the shaft so you can find this flat portion. Just going to slide the pulley on and I'm going to take and tighten down the set screw just a little bit but so I can still slide it until I hit that little notch right here and then I'll tighten it down just a hair more than this one too because we, we're still going to have to um, come back and adjust this later. We're going to line that belt up. Alright so for this step I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second and bring in the V-slot so you can see and I'm going to lay the belt in here on the track. Now I've got the teeth facing down and what I've done is I've left myself about a foot left over. But what you want to do is pull this off to the end a little and just leave yourself a little bit on the end to work with. You're also going to need to get your your T-nuts and your 4mm M5 set screws. These little guys will lock the belt into the track. Now when you put your set screws in make sure that you don't have the you don't have it sticking out here because you have to be able to slide it in. And that's one of the reasons why I have extra belt here. It's a tight fit. Push it in like this. You might need to use a flathead screwdriver to push on that if you can't get it in. That went in pretty easy though. So just somewhere on the end like you see here we can cut this off later and then we'll go ahead and tighten this down. Try to keep the belt straight because the screw wants to turn the belt. Something like that. Give a pull on the end make sure it doesn't move. And we're in good and tight there. Okay at this point we can bring the, the gantry car over and we'll go from this end ride right on top of the belt there and I'm gonna see if I can do this in one swoop but basically the idea is to bring the belt up from the bottom so bring this down to the end and then I'm gonna lift the belt up and just push it see if I can get that this like it's rising up here but get it to happen there guys right in the middle there under the wheel I'm gonna set this on top of the pulley Pull tight, and that is what you're after right there. Now I'm just holding this end right now, but at this point we can add our our other T nut. All right, so we're bringing the next locking T nut there with the set screw in it. I'm gonna pull this down like this, and then I'm gonna push it in with a pair of pliers. Now this time I pushed it up the track a little bit further, but I have it up the track far enough that if I pull back on this, I can get the tension that I need. I'm going to tighten that down right there. Leave myself a little bit of room to work with. So I'll snip these off. Snip this side off. complete unit and I still have a little bit of room here if I actually needed to take my pliers and grab this um, 
belt and pull back further if it's if it loosens or whatnot. That looks good. One of the things that we have to do the last step is going to be to get this aligned so that the belt rides in the center. So I'm going to loosen these pulley set screws. Just ride this back and forth a little bit. Kind of let it find its own home. You can always readjust this later too. And that is just a matter at this point plugging your motor in. It's nice. So that's how you build the V-slot belt and pinion linear motion drive system. We hope you enjoy it. We think that you'll find some really cool uses for this system. This is only one way to build this system. Make sure you check out openbuilds.com for the example builds, the models that showcase uh, many different ways to build this and uh, also ways to use it in, in different builds. If you build something cool with it, be sure to share it on openbuilds.com. We would appreciate it. Thanks for watching.